Hello, I am Teacher Aubrey and welcome back to my channel. I am an English teacher and my mission in this channel is to help those who would like to improve their English speaking, writing, and communication skills. Kaya mo kung interesado ka ay iniimbitahan kita na maging bahagi ng ating YouTube online community of learners. Simple lamang ang gagawin, you just have to click the subscribe button below and don't forget to ring the notification bell para lagi kang updated every time I upload new videos. Sa video natin ngayon ay pag-aaralan natin ang mga salitang has had, have had, at had had. Simulan na natin. Pag-aaralan natin ang mga salitang has had, have had, at had had. Siguro may mga pagkakataon na naririnig nyo ito o lalo na kapag nababasa ng ilan, baka akala ninyo ay mali kasi nadoble yung had. Gaya na lang sa had had. O para sa iba, baka ang gara pakinggan. Pero hindi po mali ang mga salitang yan. Mayroon talaga silang gamit sa English grammar. Magtungo muna tayo sa salitang have. Ang salitang have, in the English grammar, it is one of the verbs na kung saan ay maaaring mag-function as auxiliary verb or helping verb at maaari din namang mag-function bilang main verb. Ulitin ko, ang salitang have, dalawa yung pwedeng maging function niya in the English grammar. Pwedeng auxiliary verb o yung tinatawag nating helping verb na mamaya ay mas mauunawaan ninyo at ang isa pang function niya ay bilang main verb. Mayroon akong video na ng has, have, had na kung saan nagpo-function siya as main verb. Pwede ninyong tingnan. I-click nyo yung link sa itaas. Magtungo muna tayo dito sa function ng have bilang auxiliary verb o yung tinatawag nga natin, helping verb. Ginagamit siya bilang auxiliary verb sa mga tenses na perfect tense at perfect continuous. Narito ang mga halimbawa, tingnan natin. Sa una nating pangungusap, I have studied a lot. Ang ating salitang have dito ay nagpo-function siya bilang auxiliary verb o tinatawag nga rin nating helping verb sa English grammar. Para masabi nating helping verb ang isang verb, dapat mayroon siyang kasunod na main verb o yung mismong salitang kilos sa pangungusap. Kaya naman dito sa pangungusap natin, I have studied a lot. Ang ating uh, main verb dito ay ang salitang studied. At ang ating pong tense dito sa pangungusap na ito ay present perfect tense. I have studied a lot. Nangangahulugan na nag-aaral siya, yung pag-aaral niyang mabuti ay nagsimula sa nakaraan at nagpapatuloy hanggang sa kasalukuyan. Ginagamit din natin ang mga auxiliary verbs or helping verbs para tumukoy sa tense o sa panahunan ng isang pangungusap. In our second sentence, my friends have helped me a lot. Kahalintulad sa unang pangungusap, ang have dito ang ating pong helping verb or auxiliary verb kung saan may kasunod siya na main verb. Ang main verb natin dyan ay... Ang salitang help. Ang mga kaibigan ko ay marami na itulong sa akin. Ibig sabihin, yung ginagawang pagtulong sa iyo ng mga kaibigan mo ay nagsimula sa nakaraan at nagpapatuloy hanggang ngayon. Kahalin tulad ng unang pangungusap, itong pangalawa ay present perfect tense pa rin. Dito tayo sa pangatlo. They have been doing it for a long time. They have been doing it for a long time. Meron pa rin tayo dito ang salitang have kung saan nagpo-function pa rin siya bilang helping verb or auxiliary verb. In which, ang tense dito ng ating pong verb ay nasa present perfect continuous. Dahil ang kasunod na po ng helping verb na have ay been doing. Been and doing. Been plus the main verb do in ing form. Sa tatlong pangungusap na ito, ang ating pong salitang have ay nagpo-function bilang auxiliary verb or helping verb. Paano naman gagamitin ang salitang have kung siya na mismo yung ating main verb? Alamin natin. Ang salitang have 
ay maaari ring mag-function bilang main verb o siya yung mismong nagpapakita ng kilos sa pangungusap. Kapag ginamit natin ang salitang have bilang main verb sa pangungusap, maaari ang maging kahulugan niya ay eat o kumain, take, kinuha, possess o magpahayag na pag-aari mo ang isang bagay, experience o nagpapahayag na naranasan mong isang bagay, pwede rin drink o uminom at marami pang iba. Tingnan natin itong mga halimbawang pamungusa. I have a beautiful puppy. They have my number. You can have this sandwich. Let's have some drinks. I have fun doing this. Sa lahat ng mga pangungusap na ito, ang salitang have natin ang mismong salitang kilos o yung tinatawag nating main verb sa English kung saan sila mismo yung nagpapahayag ng kilos. At kapag uunawain natin, hindi lang basta have ang kahulugan niya dahil mayroong nakatagong ibang kahulugan. Unawain natin, sa unang pangungusap, I have a beautiful puppy. Ang have natin dito ay maaaring ang maging kahulugan ay I own or I possess a beautiful puppy. I own. Ibig sabihin, mayroon akong pag-aari. I have a beautiful puppy. I own a beautiful puppy. Next one, they have my number. Pwede ang kahulugan dito na ang word na have ay they take my number. Kinuha nila ang numero ko. Numero ng telepono ko. Sa pangatlong pangungusap, you can have this sandwich. Dito, ang salitang have natin, ang maaaring maging kahulugan ay eat. You can eat this sandwich or you can have this sandwich. Sa pangapat, let's have some drinks. So dahil tumutukoy sa drinks sa mga inumin, ang maaaring maging kahulugan dito ng verb na have ay let's have some drink. Maaaring maging Let's try. Pwedeng let's try. Let's experience some drinks. Pwedeng ganon. And the last example is, I have fun doing this. Mapapansin natin na yung main verb natin na have, tumutukoy siya doon sa karanasan sa paggawa ng tinutukoy na bagay sa pangungusap na yun. So, ang ating pong main verb na have rito, maaaring maging kahulugan niya ay experience. I experience fun doing this. Or I have fun doing this. Muli, ang ahulugan ng have sa limang pangungusap na ito, dahil sila ay nag-function bilang main verb, pwede ang kahulugan ay eat, take, possess, own, drink, experience, at marami pang iba. We are done with the word have in the present tense sa mga pangungusap natin kanina. Ngayon naman, Alamin natin, ano nga ba yung past tense and past participle ng salitang have? Both in its function as auxiliary verb or helping verb and as main verb, ang past tense ng have ay had. Ang past participle naman ng have ay had pa rin. Tingnan natin itong mga pahungusa. Una, I had breakfast already. I had breakfast already. So, dito, ang ginamit lang natin ay ang word na had, in which it is the main verb. Ibig sabihin nito ay tapos na. Past tense. Kung tumutukoy sa breakfast, it's a food. Ang meaning ng word na had dito ay ate or kumain. I ate breakfast already. Since it's simple past tense, yung kilos na ito ay natapos lang. Basta natapos na kilos. Another example, she had a lot of drinks last night. So, eto, gaya ng unang pangungusap, ang ating had dito ay nasa past tense pa rin. Past tense kasi ang tense ng pangungusap dito ay simple past. Kung saan yung had natin, yung mismo main verb o yung nagpapakita ng kilos. Okay? She had a lot of drinks last night. So, yung had dito, pwede ang kahulugan ay she took a lot of drinks last night. At gaya ng unang halimbawa natin, since gumamit tayo ng time expression na last night, ang kilos dito ay natapos sa nakaraan. Okay? Dito tayo sa pangatlo. 
I have had a lot of bad experience. So, dito sa pang-uusap natin, ginamit na nga yung have had. Kapag ginamit na ang parehong have had, my dear learners, ang unang have ay tumutukoy sa tense ng pang-uusap. Have, here, is the auxiliary verb or the helping verb and the main verb here is the word had. Have is in present perfect at kasunod na have ay past participle. And the past participle of have is had. Kaya ginamit natin ay had. I have had a lot of bad experience. So ang had natin dito ay past participle. Kung saan, kapag ginamit po natin ang have had, ang tense ng pangungusap ay present perfect. Ginagamit natin ang present perfect tense kapag gusto nating tumukoy sa isang kilos na nangyari sa nakaraan at nagpapatuloy pa rin sa pasalukuyan. Ibig sabihin, nagsimula yung uh, karanasan niya na magkaroon ng maraming hindi magandang mga karanasan sa buhay sa nakaraan, siguro nung bata siya, hanggang sa kasalukuyan, ganun pa rin ang nararanasan niya. Another and last example is, they had had the food before we reached there. Ginagamit naman natin ang had-had, ibabox ko para mas makita ninyo. Ginagamit natin itong had-had for past perfect tense. Ulitin ko, ang unang had dito ay ang ating auxiliary verb or helping verb na tumutukoy sa tense, which is past perfect. At ang pangalawang had ay ang ating main verb. Itong had na ito ay past participle ng verb na have. Had. Ginagamit ng past perfect tense kapag may dalawang kilos sa pangungusap. At ang dalawang kilos na yon ay ang unang kilos ay natapos na bago pa matapos ang isang kilos. Dito, ang atin pong unang kilos na natapos na bago pa matapos itong pangalawa ay itong they had had the food. Pwede ibig sabihin ng had dito na main verb natin ay nakain na nila. They had eaten the food. Natapos na nilang kainin ang pagkain bago pa sila makarating sa pupuntahan nila. Again, our had here is in past participle. So for our examples using the present perfect tense and past perfect tense, gaya kanina, ginapit natin yung has had and have had, tingnan natin ang table na naririto. Ang unang have, well, technically lahat sila ay have. Naiiba lang depende sa tense at depende sa number of subjects. So, ang una nating have, thinking na lahat ng ito ay have. We have has, have, and had. They all function as auxiliary verb or the helping verb in a sentence kapag gagamitin natin. Kapag sinabi natin auxiliary verb or helping verb, kailangan mayroon silang kasunod na main action verb. When we talk about auxiliary verb or helping verb, kaya nga sila helping verb, tinutulungan nila yung mismong action verb para ipahayag kung anong tense ba o kailang panahon na gaganap yung kilos, that's why auxiliary verbs show the tense of the main verb. Ginagamit ang has for present verbs. Ginagamit ang have for present verbs din. Maya-maya, ipapaliwanag ko anong pinagkaiba nila. And ginagamit naman yung had for past verbs. Again, these first verbs na have, they are functioning as auxiliary verb. While the second have na past participle, itong had na ito, they function as the main verb in a sentence. At kapag inunawa nyo yung pagkakagamit sa pangungusap, pwede ang kahulugan ng mismong salitang kilos na yon ay eat, drink, possess, take, at marami pang iba na naipaliwanag ko kanina. Ngayon, alamin natin kung kailan nga ba at saang mga subjects natin pwedeng gamitin ang has had, have had, at had had. Gaya ng sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, technically magkapareho lang naman ang has had and have had. Pareho kasi silang ginagamit for present. Yes, present perfect tense. Kung saan, ang pinagkaiba lang nila ay yung number of subjects. Has had, ginagamit siya kapag ang mga subject o ang pinag-uusapan ay he o siya na lalaki in Filipino, she or siya na babae. It, tumutukoy sa hayop, sa bagay, sa lugar, o anumang singular subjects o pinag-uusapan na isa lamang. On the other hand, ginagamit naman ang have had still for present perfect tense. Pero for the following subjects, we have I o ako, 
You, ikaw. We, tayo. They or sila o anumang plural subject o pinag-uusapan na marami or plural. And last one is had-had. Ang had-had po ay ginagamit for past. Past perfect tense. Since past perfect tense, ginagamit na subject for had-had ay lahat po ng kabilang dito or lahat ng uri ng subject. Regardless of the number, isa man yan o marami, wala pong problema dahil past tense naman na. Naintindihan? Ngayon ay tingnan natin ang mga halimbawang pangusa para mas maunawaan. Unahin natin ang mga halimbawang pangusa para sa has-had. The first one is, she isn't coming for lunch. She has had lunch already. She has had lunch already. Ang una natin has dito ay auxiliary verb or helping verb na tumutukoy sa tense ng ating main verb na had. It is in present perfect tense. Kaya naman ang kasunod ay had. Pwedeng ang kahulugan niyan ay eaten kasi tumutukoy sa lunch. She has had lunch already or may mean she has eaten lunch already. Another example is Ron has had enough alcohol. Ron has had enough alcohol. What has here is the auxiliary verb at ang kasunod ay had. Pwedeng ang kahulugan dito ng had as the main verb is drink or Using the past participle, it will be Ron has drunk enough alcohol. Kaya naman, Ron has had enough alcohol. Let's have this third example. But unlike the first two, papapansin natin sa third example, it's the negative form of has, which is hasn't. Okay? The word has not. Ang contraction niya ay hasn't. This one. Tony hasn't had any sleep since yesterday. Ibig sabihin, it's the negative form. Hindi pa nakakatulog. Kahit saglit si Tony mula kahapon. Has here, which is in negative form, hasn't, is the auxiliary verb. At ang kasunod is the main verb. Pwede ang kahulugan ng main verb na to is taken. Hindi pa niya nagawa or hindi niya pa naranasan. Pwede sabihin, Tony hasn't experienced or Tony hasn't taken any sleep since yesterday. Let him rest for some time. And the last example is, he's had great experiences working as trainer here. So in this last example, he's had. Baka akala ng iba, ibig sabihin ng his dito ay he is. Pero hindi po. Mamaya, mas malalaman niyo. It's still he has had. He has had great experiences working as trainer here. Our has here, he's had. Nakatago siya sa contracted form na he has, which is his. Ang unang has dyan, gaya ng mga nauna, ay nagpo-function pa rin sa auxiliary verb na tumutukoy sa tense ng main verb. At yung kasunod na had ay yung mismong salitang kilos natin sa pangungusap. He's had great experience working as trainer here. Mapapansin natin dito, gumamit tayo ng contraction. Tingnan natin itong mga contraction na naririto. Kapag ang gusto mong sabihin ay he has had, ang subject mo ay he, ang contraction niya ay his had. Hindi ibig sabihin niya ay he is, that is he has had. Huwag kayong malilito. Ang contraction naman ng she has had ay she's had. At ang contraction naman kapag may pangalan tayong ginamit, singular name, halimbawa ay John has had, Aalisin na natin yung ha, ayan, may apostrophe na, magiging John's had. That also means John has had. Mas pinaikli lang natin. At muli, ulitin ko, ginagamit natin ang has had kapag ang tense natin ay present perfect o kapag gusto natin tukuyin na yung kilos ay nangyari sa nakaraan at nangyayari pa rin. It has a relative connection in the present. Nangyayari pa rin hanggang ngayon. Let's now move on to the examples using have had. Itong have had na ito ay kapareho lang din nung naon na kanina na has had. Ang pinagkaiba lang nila ay gagamit tayo ngayon ng mga subjects na plural dahil ginagamit ang have had for I, you, we, they, or any plural subject. Tingnan natin. Ang una, I have had enough rest. I have had enough rest. Ang unang have natin dito is the auxiliary or helping verb. 
And the second had is our main verb. Pwede ang kahulugan ng had na main verb rito ay taken. I have taken enough rest. I have had enough rest. Second example, John and I have had amazing success recently. John and I, that is already plural, kaya ginamit natin, I have had. John and I have had amazing success recently. Again, ang have natin dito, the first have is the auxiliary verb or helping verb. The second had is our main verb or the action verb in the sentence. Maaari nga maging kahulugan ng main verb rito na had ay experience. Pwede sabihin, John and I have experienced amazing success recently. The third one is, I've had these pancakes many times. Ibig sabihin dati pa man natikman niyo na yung pancake na yun at hanggang ngayon natitikman at nakakain niya pa rin. So dito mapapansin natin, gumamit tayo ng contraction. Ng I, ang subject natin ay I, at may kasunod na auxiliary verb na have, ginawa siyang contraction naging I've, I've had. I've had these pancakes many times. So, pwedeng ang kahulugan na main verb na had dito ay eaten because we talk about pancakes. I've had these pancakes. I've eaten these pancakes many times. And the last example is, they've had terrible experiences with the company. They've had. Ang subject natin dito ay they or sila. Marami sila. That's plural. Kaya ang ginamit ay have had. Pero pansinin natin, gaya ng third example, gumamit pa rin ng contraction. We have the word they and then the auxiliary verb have, kaya naging they've. They've had. The first have is the auxiliary or the helping verb, which tells the tense of the verb in the sentence, which is present perfect, followed by the main verb, which is had. Pwede natin uh, masabi na ang kahulugan ng had dito ay experienced. Okay? They've experienced terrible experiences with the company. Pero pwede tayo umisip na iba pang salita na kasing kahulugan ng experience kasi mauulit dito. Magiging redundant. Although yung experience na gagamitin dito ay verb in which this one is a noun. Now, let's move on to these contractions. Ginagamit natin yung I've had kapag ang gusto natin sabihin ay I have had. Gusto natin mas maging maikli. Karaniwan kasi kapag nagsasalita, di ba parang ang sagwa pakinggan, I have had, minsan parang sa hindi familiar na tagapakinig, parang mali siya. Kaya karaniwan kapag oral communication ay ginagamit ay contraction form. Okay? Ang contraction ng I have had ay I've had. Contraction ng we have had, we've had. They have had, magiging they've had. For you have had, it will be you've had. Again, ginagamit natin itong have had kapag gusto nating tumukoy sa isang kilos na nagsimula sa nakaraan at may relasyon pa rin sa pangkasalukuyan. Lastly, let us have these example sentences using the verbs had had, had had. I like the first two, has had and have had. Ginagamit yung dalawang yun for present perfect tense. Ginagamit naman natin ang had had for past perfect tense. Kung saan, kapag sinabi natin past perfect tense, gusto natin ipahayag na mayroong naunang kilos na natapos bago natapos ang isa pa. So, mayroong dalawang kilos. Ang unang natapos na kilos, yun yung ginagamitin natin ng had-had. Tingnan natin itong mga halimbawang pangusa. Ang una, they had had the food before we reached there. Gaya ng sinabi ko, ginagamit ng had-had kapag may dalawang kilos sa pangusa. At yung dalawang kilos na yun, yung una ay natapos na bago pa matapos yung isa. Ang una ay, they had had the food. Yan yung una. Ang pangalawa, we reached there. So, ang unang natapos, they had had the food. Ang unang had dito is the auxiliary or helping verb na tumutukoy sa tense ng no ating main verb na had, which is past perfect. Okay? Yung pangalawang had natin dito is the main verb. At maaaring ang kahulugan niya ay eaten kasi tumutukoy sa food. Pwedeng sabihin, they had eaten the food before we reached there. 
Nakain na nila yung pagkain bago pa kami nakarating doon. Another example, she'd had enough before we could stop her. So, ang ating pong subject rito ay she. At yung kasunod ay yung auxiliary or helping verb na had, ginamitan ng contraction. Kaya naging she'd. That is the shortened form for she had. She'd had enough before we could stop her. Another example, before the canteen opened, we'd had the lunch at a Chinese restaurant. Sa mga pangungusap na ginagamitin ng past perfect, hindi natin laging nakikita sa unahan yung past perfect or yung had-had. Pwedeng nasa second clause siya. Gaya dito sa pangungusap na ito, nandito siya sa gawing hulihan na. Ang naunang inilagay sa pangungusap ay yung pangalawang kilos na natapos. Ang unang natapos ay, we'd had the lunch at a Chinese restaurant. Or we had had the lunch. Ibig sabihin, Nauna na kaming kumain, we had eaten the lunch. Nakakain na kami sa isang Chinese restaurant before the canteen opened, bago pa magbukas yung kantina. Now, let's move on to these contractions for the subjects being used in had-had. For I had had, I had had, ang ginagamit natin ay I'd had. It will be I'd had. For he had had, it will be he'd had. She had had will be she'd had. We had had will be we'd had. They had had will be they'd had. And lastly, we have you had had will be you'd had. At pansinin niyo mula sa umpisang halimbawa kanina nung ginamitan natin ang has had, have had, had had. Pansinin niyo kung paano ko binanggit. Has had, have had. Had had. Yung unang haves natin, which is has, have, and had, hindi ini-stress yun o wala doon ang diin. Ang diin ay nasa main verb. Dahil ang main verb talaga, yung pangalawang haves natin, sila yung gusto nating bigyan ng focus sa pangungusap kapag ginagamit natin ng has had, have had, had had. Kaya kung mapabansin ninyo mula kanina, ang sabi ko ay has had. Hindi ko sinabing has had. Ang sabi ko ay has had. Dahil ang gusto nating bigyan ng emphasis ng be in ay yung pangalawang have. Another one is have had. Have had. And the last is had had. Kung marami na kayong natutuhan, don't forget to like this video. Let's go back to the lesson. Before I end this lesson, alamin muna natin ito. We can use adverbs between has had, have had, and had had. Pwede po nating lagyan ng pang-abay or adverb sa pagitan ng has had, have had, and had had. Tingnan natin. I've just had the drink you had sent. Gumamit tayo ng adverb na just o katatapos lang. I've just had the drink you had sent. Nasa pagitan siya ng have at ng had. Nasa gitna. Another one is he has recently had a life-changing encounter with a beggar. Ang ginamit natin dito ay has had, has had. Nagagay tayo sa pagitan nila ng adverb na recently. Has recently had. Neto lang. Kakatapos-tapos lang mangyari. Okay? And lastly, we have before she turned 25, she had never had a man in her life. So, dito sa ating had-had, sa pagitan niya, naglagay tayo ng adverb of frequency na never. Ngayon, alam na ninyo na kapag ginagamit na ng has-had, have-had, at had-had, ulitin ko lang, ang unang haves natin, sila po ay nagpo-function as auxiliary or helping verb na kung saan they tell the tense of the main verb in the sentence. Specifically, kapag ginagamit ang tatlong ito, Ang tense no verb na ginagamitan niyan ay perfect tense. We have present perfect and past. For present perfect, ang ginagamit ay has had or have had. Nangangahulugan na yung kilos ay nagsimula sa nakaraan at may relasyon pa rin o nagpapatuloy pa rin sa kasalukuyan. Kapag ginagamit naman ang had had, ginagamit siya for past perfect tense. O mayroong dalawang kilos na nangyari sa pangungusap. Mayroong unang kilos na natapos na bago pa matapos 
yung isa. At yung pangalawang haves natin, itong nasa hulihan, yung had, sila po ay mga past participle na ng salitang have. And they function as the main verb o yung mismong salitang kilos sa pangungusap. Na kung saan kapag inunawa ang pangungusap, pwede nga maging kahulugan ay eat, drink, possess, experience, at marami pang iba. This time, let's have this five item quiz. Tingnan natin kung nakunawaan ba ninyong mabuti ang ginawa natin pag-aaral. Mamimili lang kayo sa has had, have had, and had had. And let's just consider the number of the subject as well as the actions done in the sentence. Kung may dalawang kilos na may naunang natapos sa nakaraan bago matapos pa ang isa, had had ang gagamitin. Pero kung uh, nangyayari sa pangkasalukuyan, nagsimula sa nakaraan at nangyayari pa rin hanggang ngayon, has had or have had ang gagamitin. Has had for singular, have had for plural. Let's start. Number one, stellar blank Korean food many times. Stellar is singular. And obviously, hanggang sa kasalukuyan siya. So it is, has had. Stellar has had Korean food many times. Number two, Tommy and David blank many affairs in their lives. Well, obviously, ang subject natin ay sina Tommy and David, so that is plural. Ang gagamitin ay have, have had. I-check natin. At yung kilos ay nangyayari pa rin hanggang ngayon sa buhay nila. So the answer is have had. It will be Tommy and David have had many affairs in their lives. Number three, I'm not feeling well. I blank headache all day. All day. Nangyayari pa rin hanggang ngayon. The subject is I. So what should we write there? It should be have had. I have had, or let's try using the contraction. I've had headache all day. Next, he blank just blank two surgeries on his back. Well, ano mapapansin ninyo? Naglagay tayo. Sa sentence na to, mayroong adverb sa pagitan nung dalawang halves. So it will be, what's the answer? Has had. He has just had two surgeries on his back. And the last one is Phoebe blank enough before her rivals could stop her. Well, tingnan natin sa pamumusap na ito, ang subject natin ay si Phoebe. Pero, ang kilos dito ay dalawa. May naunang natapos na kilos bago matapos o mangyari yung isa. So, the answer here is had had. Phoebe had had enough before her rivals could stop her. Basahin natin ulit. Stellar has had Korean food many times. Tommy and David have had many affairs in their lives. I'm not feeling well. I've had headache all day. He has just had two surgeries on his back. And Phoebe had had enough before her rivals could stop her. Ilan ang tamang sagot na nakuha ninyo? Huwag mahiya na ilagay sa ating comment section sa iba pa. And my challenge is this. Subukan ninyong gumawa ng kahit isang pangusap gamit ang has had, have had, and had had. At ilagay sa ating comment section sa iba pa. And that's our lesson for today. Kung marami kang natutuan, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Yes, like, share, comment, and subscribe. At huwag mo rin kalimutan na i-click ang notification bell para lagi kang updated every time I upload new videos. And I would like to invite all of you to support me on my second YouTube channel in which I do vlogs together with my family. It is Aubrey and Family Lifestyle TV. And please support my little sister as she shares her English tutorials as well as study tips on her uh, YouTube channel. The name of her channel is I am Miles Bermudez. Lastly, you may send super thanks to show support on my content. Ngayon naman ay batiin natin ang mga nagre-request. It's shout out time! Unahin natin batiin si Queenie Jane Sardovia. Hello Queenie Jane Sardovia. Sabi niya, Hi Teacher Aubrey, shout out naman po sa next vlog mo. Hehe, <laughs> thank you. Ayan ha, shout out sa'yo Queenie Jane Sardovia. Next, batiin natin si... Mary Ann Cabatania. Hello, Mary Ann Cabatania. 
Thank you so much po. Shout out from Saudi Arabia. Mwah. Ayan, shout out sa iyo at sa lahat din mga kababayan natin dyan sa Saudi Arabia. Thank you, Mary Ann Kabatania. Another one, ito galing pa rin sa Saudi Arabia. Shout out natin si Rich Boy Vlog. Hello sa iyo, Rich Boy Vlog. Sabi niya, Thank you for sharing this video. Shout out watching here in Saudi Arabia. Ayan, mag-iingat po kayong lagi dyan sa Saudi Arabia. Ito naman, isang kababayan natin na nasa ibang bansa rin. Shout out to Angelina Buguis. Hello, Angelina Buguis. Sabi niya, I'm always impressed with all the topics that you are sharing, Ma'am Aubrey. Ayan, maraming salamat po sa pag-appreciate. Shout out here in Hawaii. Thank you. Ayan, shout out po sa iyo. Miss Angelina Buguis at sa lahat ng mga kababayan natin dyan sa Hawaii. Aloha! <laughs> Next naman, shoutout natin itong si Kim Dayun Dubu. Hello Kim! Sabi niya, shoutout to all senior high school and college students here. Ayan, hindi siya nagpapashoutout pero sige, shoutout ko na rin lahat ng mga senior high school at college student na studyante ko dito sa ating channel. Well, nag-start na nga ang uh, face-to-face classes sa uh, God bless sa inyong pag-aaral. Kayang kaya niyo yan. Sana makatulong yung mga video lessons dito sa ating channel. Last na batiin natin, si Ellen Dimayuga. Hello, Ellen Dimayuga. Sabi niya, Hi, Ma'am Aubrey. Ang galing mong mag-explain. Ang galing kong maintindihan ng mga example mo. Thank you for being a good instructress. Hmm. Shout out po dito sa Lipa, Batangas. Ellen here, your new student. Hello, Ellen Dimayuga. At sa lahat ng mga tagariyan sa Batangas. Nung mga nakaraang buwan, galing kami dyan ng family ko, nag vacation kami. Saan sa Batangas yun? Sa Kalatagan. Kalatagan ng live. Basta nasa Batangas kami nung nakaraan. And hayaan nyo rin po na pasalamatan ko rin yung lahat ng mga nag-congratulate sa akin at sa aking husband kasi I just uploaded our wedding video just last, last time. So, ayun, nabasa ko. Ang daming comments. Hindi ko naman po kayo mapasalamatan isa-isa. But I appreciate all your uh, warm greetings, best wishes po para sa akin at sa akin pong husband. Lalo na nga yung mga kapatid na nag-comment. Nakakatuwa ang daming kapatid na nag-comment. Marami pong salamat mula sa iba't ibang lokal, mga distrito. I appreciate you. Uh, just to mention a uh, few. Sina Edna Barasi, Cherry May Tuwanda. Hello po. Ayan, ugaling Pinoy ni Tutor Alexis, pati na rin si na Mariel Junio, at si Tuazon Digna. Ayan, no? Maraming salamat, napakarami. Hindi ko na po kayo maisa-isa, but I really appreciate, in behalf of my husband, appreciate po namin yung pagbati po ninyo. Maraming salamat po mga kapatid. And that's the end of our shoutout in this video lesson. Kung gusto ninyong mabati, ay uh, mag-comment kayo sa ating comment section sa ibaba. ba. Sabihin ninyo kung taga saang lugar kayo para po mabati ko kayo. And you may also join the exclusive membership on our channel para rin ma-flash yung pangalan ng ating mga exclusive members. Maraming salamat po. At bilang panghuli, Laging tatandaan na anuman ang inyong mga edad, estado sa buhay o narating sa buhay, kung mayroon kayong mga pangarap, walang imposible basta lagi lamang pagsisikapan at pagsasanayan. See you on my next videos! Bye!